Now, code editors are a big deal to people who code. So in today's video, I wanna share with you a few cool features from one of my favorite code editors, Coda, from Panic. And then after the show, I'll tell you how you can win a free copy of this awesome software for yourself. Stick with us. Panic just updated their flagship code editor to version 2.5, and among other things, it has a beautiful new UI that goes along with OSX Yosemite. And I was so excited about that that I wrote them, and I was like, ah, hey, can you spare a copy for my audience here at DevTips? And they are just so nice. But before we get into that, I want to share with you a few of my favorite features of Coda 2.5. Now the idea behind Coda is to have a one window development experience. And I have a project here, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So right off the bat, you can see that we can do things to keep it all in the same window, like divide um, the panels. And I can take my CSS file here, drag it over on top. And now I'm working with both my HTML and CSS at the same time. Let me make this screen bigger here. But it doesn't stop there with just splitting the screen with code. You can even split the screen with a preview. So if I just open this document here in a split screen uh, situation, I can, I can edit both my markup and my CSS and see the resulting uh, website right here in line as I edit. They even have this really cool feature where um, this preview will update as you type. I'm gonna come down here to this input field. See how the width of these text inputs are not as wide as the text area below it? I wanna quickly change that. Now over here in my CSS, I can see that the, the text area is 390 and the input and text area is 270. So I just changed this to, to 390 and that quickly, the, uh, the text area just jumps over to the width I asked it to. I didn't have to save. I didn't have to refresh any browsers. It's just like it's just as I'm going. Watch, I'll change this background to yellow, and it's done. Like it's just that fast. It's it's pretty cool when the work that you do in your code reflects immediately as you type in the in the preview. That's just really cool. Let me just change that back there. Actually, I could just use a color picker here to find a cool color. Uh, I'll probably just go with white though. Now I can take this split screen idea one step further and, and I've changed sites now. This is my personal website. If I split this screen again and have two of my websites here, I can squeeze this on down and kind of just design for mobile at the same time as designing for, for desktop as well. So I have the desktop version and the mobile version, which is really awesome when uh, designing in a, a responsive workflow. This is pretty sweet. Now taking this idea of a one window workflow you can even open a new tab here and instead of using an editor to edit a document, you can create a new terminal and I'll connect it to localhost and now I'm ready to start you know, using the command line to uh, start running applications like SAS. You can, I can use Git right here or I could use Jekyll like we did in the earlier series without ever leaving this one app. It's pretty impressive. So that's the first thing I like about Coda. It's got that one window development approach. It's really awesome. Now SCSS and Less are native to Coda, but there is a plugin that adds syntax highlighting and code completion for indented SAS. You know, the other day a viewer of uh, DevTips was asking me if I knew a code editor that had code complete for indented SAS. And I really did it until this week I was messing around with Coda in preparation for this video. And, and look at this, what do you know? <laughs> um, code completion for indented SAS. The only one I've seen that does this, awesome. Now you've seen code complete for CSS and I'm sure you've seen it for SCSS, but SAS, the indented flavor doesn't usually get it because it doesn't have those brackets and colons that help you know, normal uh, text editors to know uh, what's a selector, what's a value, what's a property, you know? So this is really cool. I don't know how they did this, but I'm really excited that they did. Now you guys know how I love indented SAS, but one of the criticisms I hear against it is 
that you can kind of get lost in the indentions and you're not clear on you know what selector is a child of what selector but coda has indention guides now which is awesome so if i outdent or indent you can tell at what level uh, these lines are at and as i scroll through this document i can easily see which styles are children of which other styles and that gets super super helpful when things get complicated and detailed as you get better with sass Another thing that's really cool is in the settings here, there's something called Sync, and it's a free service to everybody who owns a copy of Coda. It's Panic Sync, and you can sync your preferences, your themes, your uh, your snippets, and you know your FTP logins, everything across multiple Macs. So I would always have this problem where I would make a really awesome snippet that I wanted to save late at night, you know, when I'm working at home, and then the next day not have it when I go to work. But now with Panic Sync, problem is solved. Coda does something that I've never seen any code editor do before. Watch this. If I create just a random element and I open a class attribute, it, it offers to me a quick look at all of the class names that exist in the accompanying CSS. So for example, right here, I have a class name belt. And over here in my CSS, I actually have a class name that I myself have written called belt. Now that's amazing. It's not just auto-completing with commonly used ex expressions you know, in general web development industry. I mean, these are class names that I myself have written while I've been working in this project. And that's just so impressive to me. I've never seen that before. Now this can be super handy when you're trying to remember that bootstrap class name or, you know, something new your colleague has written or something like that, but I'm just so impressed by it. This is a feature I've always loved. It's called multi-line edit. I just hold option here and you see my cursor turns into this crosshair and I can select multiple lines of text. And what I do on one line happens to all the lines. So I just deleted that whole word and it, it's just that easy to edit the whole thing. This really comes in handy when you're uh, creating like navigation items or lists or things like that. When you need to make a lot of repetitive elements in kind of a row and then jump out of that multi-line edit and then, you know, like right here, I've added one through 10 here to signify the differences between the, the divs. Super handy. You can use a feature called Quick Open by hitting Control and Q. And you have this search field that kind of pops open. And then, you know, you can look across your whole project and find anything you want. So watch, here we are. Uh, here's an element called contact, and that's in my HTML that I had open here. Uh, do a little bit more. I can type function, and I can open not only just, you know, look inside and find uh, elements inside of documents, I can just open documents right away. And so that's an easy way to jump around and find the document that you kn that you know is in there, but you don't want to dig through the folder structure. You can just open it by name by using control Q. And then here's work, find the work and function. There it is, the work function. So it's a great way to navigate your project, especially as it gets really big and search becomes faster than manually quick clicking open on each of these files. Now when you have a project open and you're viewing it in the preview, you can actually uh, use different viewing agents. Um, like for example, I can emulate what this looks like in Internet Explorer or Safari here. But what's really cool is that I have, um, you know, I can look at this, what this looks like in an iPhone and it gives me this kind of really fun kind of outline here. So this is what it looks like in mobile. And I can try it also in, um, let's see here. Um, Here's an iPad. So it's still got that fun chrome around it. It's a pleasant surprise. I like it. Coda does something called plugins. Plugins are awesome. They have a few different kinds of them. There are general ones, sidebars like this one here, and the sidebar is pretty cool. I added color picker here of the of like common CSS colors. You know, there's syntax highlighting. I mean, you can even compile as CSS files, different themes for Coda, and you can easily get more and add more here with this uh, online repository. So you can come here and if you know find different plugins that you like different themes, they have previews for all of these. And it's just, I mean, installing one is just as simple as clicking install and then having it show up here and it's done. You can pick it from the list. Where'd it go? That one. 
And now all my code looks like this theme. I don't really like that one, but anyway. But you see how easy it is to get all these plugins for Coda. It's really cool, but my favorite one, I'm really liking this espresso-ish light. You guys know I like espresso. And they've replicated the, um, the syntax highlighting right here inside of Coda, so can't be all that bad. Love it. Love it. Coda comes loaded with reference material they call books. Let me show you. I'm going to open a new tab, but I'm going to open a book this time. And there's all these books here to choose from. Some of the books are just really easy links to various docs on the internet, like SAS here. You see that it's actually loading the SAS docs website. It's kind of a simple approach, but it does save you a Google search. But some of the books here, like this one for HTML, is actually built into Coda, and it's searchable. Like... Um, and you can find like pretty much everything about it. Browser supports, examples of how to use it, the different attributes available. It's super helpful for someone who's just getting started and doesn't have all the elements uh, memorized yet. And, but it's especially helpful for JavaScript or CSS where the, you know, these attributes are just continually growing and it's a great resource to learn or just reference something that you're trying to remember how to do it. Here's an information about boxes. I mean, how great is this? And it's right inside the app. Again, it's one window development. You're never, ever leaving Coda. Now, you may be asking yourself, how can one such as I get my hands on a tasty morsel such as this? Panic has been so awesome as to give me a spare copy of Coda to give out to one of you lucky ducks. All you need to do is be a subscriber of DevTips and tweet this video with the hashtag of DevTips giveaway. And I'll be announcing the randomly selected winner next Monday, so tune in for that. Be sure to check out the secret link in the description below in this video. And this week's Dev Tips question of the week is, what is your favorite feature on the editor of your choice? Throw your answer in the comments below and I will leave you with my favorite answer from last week's question in which I asked you about your Halloween costumes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a gorilla dancing to the Spice Girls. <laughs>